Hi, it's Jess here from Nigers.co.uk. Thank you for joining me today. So it's Wednesday, so it's a, a junk journal. So I've made a little, oh, a little junk journal here. It's uh, four by by four, and um, it's not quite finished yet because I've made this in two parts, and I haven't quite finished part two, and I. Uh, realized I hadn't done an introduction to it so um, we're making this uh, I um, you might have seen these before and uh, so it all opens up like that so two sides and then they all close in on each other again and it fastens so uh, there will be decoration on the front and things, but in this episode, I just do the construction of it, the putting it together, and in part two, I do the decoration. So hope you enjoy it, and then go and look at part two. So the first thing we've got to do is prepare our papers. So I'm using this book here. As you can see, it cost me a pound. I did look it up on um, the internet to check I wasn't cutting up something that's really valuable. And I found them on second-hand book um, sites for no less than two pound. So I was, I was quite happy with that because I'm never gonna be bothered to sell it. It's from the 1950s. It's not a first edition, um, published in 54. And this edition was 56. So um, to make it easier, um, I've never done this before in terms of um, to have uh, book pages at hand, but I just slit it down with a with a craft knife. I've I've um, taken out the sort of front and back pages, which are actually really nice um, plain sheets, which I thought would be good for for things. So I'm keeping those to to one side. I like the dust cover. I'll, I'll be thinking of a way of using that. So now I can easily just rip pages off and you get a better better um, sort of edge than if the book's attached and you're ripping out from from the middle and I liked this book because it's quite a good quality uh, paper I've got a really old dictionary and um, some old books the the paper are quite fragile but this one I suppose it's not that old 56 like 70 odd years old isn't it so uh, well not quite um, so so yeah that's uh, that's in the prep. Now, I do have a very large old encyclopedia, which would probably cover most of this, but not everybody's got um, big pages. So I thought I'd um, kind of work out a way of um, doing it with smaller book pages. So this is my tea dyed paper. This is the stuff that's 120 GSM. So there's a bit more body to the little um mini journal and um so i just want to, to to cover this now you could cover it in this sort of uniform manner and then sort of trim bits down you could do it in a proper rip up collage way we could do it this way and um yeah, the, the, the choice is yours how you do it. I'm just going to cover one side of the paper and have the other side um, the tea dyed. So I am just going to do one sheet with you and uh, I'll do the others um, off camera because they'll all be done in the same way. I'm going to use my little um, old Stampin' Up catalogue, which is what I tend to use when I'm gluing. Now you can decide whether or not you want to keep the margins or not. I think they might add a bit of interest. So I'm going to keep them keep them in there. I like to cover with a glue stick um, so that I know that the whole of the sheets are tiered. And then I do go over with wet glue. So this is a very cheap glue stick. Um, Q Connect and uh, it works for me. Um, it was one that Artie Mays used 
which was why I thought, oh, I'll have a little look at that one. Couldn't get to the shops, so needed to be able to get it online. Now, this is my Kalal glue, and I have managed to gunge up the nozzle. But it does peel off, but I haven't used it for quite a while. I've been busy making Stampin' Up! projects to get ahead so that I could devote a bit more time to doing this. So there we go. So this is Kalal decanted into a Sugar Bell bottle, which I love. Easy to squeeze, very important when you've got rheumatoid arthritis in your hands. So that is one of the pages prepared and then if I cover this side there's a bit of white there and then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go there just gonna go there and then I'm gonna take my nice long foam folder you can use any sort of glue spreader you might have I've got like loyalty cards they work really well as well but this one came with my book binding kit so I really liked it so that nice little smooth finish there is some oozing which I'm going to get rid of oh and there I've ripped not that I'm bothered now you could I thought about this you could ink round the edges of all of these but I'm not going to I'm going to ink round edges when it's done but not at this stage so I'm just gonna glue the next page in exactly the same way okay so that that bit glued down now we've got this edge bit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it off. It's covered in glue and I'm going to use it, not waste it. It's already glued. So I can use that to patch up one of these sections, so it'll go over there nicely. And don't mind that the words are going in a different way because these will be little square sections, so it's okay. You may need to afterwards go over some of these edges. Now we've got a little bit there, so we can maybe use Use some more. And you could do, I mean, basically we're doing a collage, so this could be the beginnings of a masterboard as well. So, uh, yes, lots of, lots of possibilities. Put that there. Might need a little bit better glue in. On the end there. But for now, for now that will do. Depends where I cut the paper down because we've got to cut it into a square. So it is going to have to be, I was kind of thinking of doing eight by eight. So, uh, so I'm not sure yet where I will be cutting this, but we'll just get it covered for now. So that is a way of using your offcuts and creating something a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to finish that off um, for you.
So then we've got it all glued down. So I'll just go over with my bone folder on the back there and then just check some of these edging that might need a little bit of glue. So I've got my little bit of collar in here. So some of these areas where it's got a join, I'll just put a bit of glue and make sure that they're all fitted down nicely. Some of these bits will be discarded but if you were going to use this as a basis of a masterboard then uh, you want them to be down so I'm quite happy with this that looked like it was going to come up yeah, just a tad there so that's that so I say this would make a nice sort of base for a, for a masterboard or even for a for a, the start of a cover. It's quite nice. I like them all going in different directions. You know, when you start something out, you don't know how it's going to end up, and uh, you surprise yourself sometimes. Sometimes it might look rubbish, and you think, "Why did I do that?" At the end of the day, it's a bit of paper. So it uh, didn't actually cost very much, just a little bit of time. So that is that. So I'm going to do all, all the others. So that's all three of them stuck, stuck down. And I think that is actually really nice paper. So I'm definitely going to probably do this again now that is where the paper was overcooked so i want to make sure that that um, is cut off so i'm going to cut these to eight by eight and then that gives me a nice square so i'm going to go slightly over there so that i can trim the top the top down in case there's any sort of rough edges and save those bits to make nice embellishments so that's eight and we are just over an eight because the paper's eight and a quarter obviously if you've got different size paper you'll have a little bit more to cut off but I'm making sure that I'm actually cutting a bit off all four sides so that they're they're all nice and neat so let's get the rest of them cut so that's them all cut up so we've got three nice even squares there now this will work with any any size square uh, I've just uh, chosen to do it eight by eight. Now you might find that now you've got little bits like that where you've done your trimming that might come up. So just add a little bit of glue where necessary. I'm not worried too much about some bits, but just make sure there's no glaring, glaringly obvious bits like that. And then we're going to do um, some scoring. I'm going to score on this side because that makes it easier. So we're going to score in half. So it's eight inches. So we're going to score at four. And we'll score at four that way. And this way you could just fold it in half and then we want a diagonal so what I like about this trimmer is you can just pop that up there make sure the point is on the score line there and score we're only going to do one 
diagonal. Okay, and I'm going to show you how we fold before I do the, the others. So fold it in half. And so you don't have to score, you could just fold in half. I like to score. I am a precise crafter. There we go. And then diagonally across there. And then I like to score it in the opposite direction as well. So it helps if the crease is going in both directions for later on when we're doing the, the folding up. So that is what we're going to get and eventually they will fold in like that to form a nice square and that's the size that our journal is going to be and then I like to fold the other way as well because at the moment I don't know which way round we're going to do this because I haven't decided so that is what we've got so you can see there are uh, these become like a page um, now you can at this stage ink it ink it up if you want to um, I'm going to because I like to get inky and I'm gonna ink it up I think with my cinnamon cider And I'm going to use my cinnamon cider sponge, which I didn't get out ready. And there it is. So I'm just going to go around all of these edges. think that would look nice. You can omit this bit. You don't have to do it. The sponge is getting a bit ragged. But I like this look. And then we'll do the other side as well. And we're going to do exactly the same to all three pieces. So when I've done this, I will do those off camera. And then I'll show you how I put it together. Doing edges like this always kind of wears out sponges. There we go. And then, oh, nearly, nearly missed this bit. As I say, you could have inked round the edges of all these pages as well, if you wanted to. I wanted it to be a little bit quicker and I am going to be decorating on top of these pages so I didn't think it really warranted the extra time. Now I did notice there that that needs sticking down. So I'm just going to put a bit of glue on there. There we have it. So I'm going to finish off all the others and then we'll get back to it so that's all three of them done so what we're going to do is um, join them together along where they haven't got the diagonal bit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn one over now I've got 
that bit that was overcooked. So I want to make sure that that is, is covered. So we can do it like that. And then that sides like that. Or we can have it like that. Not sure that I made any difference there. So we've got full book on there and two full books on that side. So we're seeing less of the of the coffee. You can do it that way or you can do it so you see more of the coffee if it's tea. So it's up to you how you want it to look. I'm going for that. I want that bit covered up. Okay, so that is the way we're going. So you just glue these bits down. So I'm going to put some glue all the way around. Square like that. And glue that square onto there. Using a bone folder to squeeze it out. Do you know, the first time I saw this design was at a wedding and it was um, the menus on the table and uh, I nicked one. Well, I didn't nick one. They were there for the taking. I did ask the bride, who was my mate. Well, I was mates with both bride and groom and went, I love it. Can I, can I take it? And I do gather memorabilia anyway from weddings because sort of put them in scrapbooks and things. So, but I wanted to know how it was made because it just looked so clever. And then I worked it out. So I've made quite a few of these different sizes. I made my niece one for her 40th birthday. Um, I did that with six by six. And I have done 12 by 12, which is quite big because you get like six by six squares. So that is it all joined together. So it is a good way of using up um, sort of scrapbook pages as well if you've got lots of 12 by 12s. So now we just want it to fold up, which is why we made sure that these creases went in every direction. So give that a squeeze and then it opens up. You can, of course, go the other way. Depends which, which way you want it to be, what you want to be on the sort of outside cover. You can add a separate sort of cover to it. So they can be either way, but you need to make your decision about that. And the more you play with it, the easier it will fold in. So that's going really well. So you've got a front and a back to this and you can decorate both sides. And you can put a cover on it and then we can do a little, a little tie. We'll go the other way. I'm trying to decide which way I want it. Decisions, decisions. So 
So if it's that way, those two faces will get covered up. And I might do that. Okay, so that's that bit. And then you've just got, you've got bits here for decorating. So we've got these nice flat areas. So obviously those two will be the covers. So we've only got two on that side. So they make good places for putting photos. So you may choose to leave those as they are for putting photos on. And then you've got triangle sections that you can use for decoration and journaling. And you can make pockets. So, forgetting which way I want this to close in. So what you've got to remember, if you're gonna do some pockets and you still want it to close. So if you're, you want it so that they're, they would stick out these sides so they would come out of here as opposed to this way because then they won't fold if you've got tabs coming up this way but if you've got tabs going out the edges they will stick out the two sides so let's get the next bit ready So we have got four by four. So I'm going to cut the cover. I'm going to use cinnamon cider um, cardstock. So it has to be, um, I'm going to make it a, a quarter of an inch um, bigger. So I'm going to go four and a quarter and that gives us uh, an eighth of an inch on each side. So cut this at four and a quarter square. We need two of them, and that will give us quite a nice sort of cover for the little journal. So, obviously, if you're using uh, American letter size paper you can do this with less wastage because your um, paper's um, a different size but that's ours isn't with A4 so um, I want to do something with it so I've got a lovely embossing folder that makes it look like old paper there we go. So I am going to emboss these squares to give this old paper look. So I'll get that sorted. So there it is. So how gorgeous is that? So you can choose to have it um, either side. There's been a glue dot on there. Um, which way round? You want it I quite like that way actually and you can of course um, ink it to um, show these um, a little bit more so I'm gonna take my cinnamon cider ink and I'm gonna take a blending brush this is my brown one and just run that across to give it a bit of a distressed look there. They give the impression of yeah, a little bit of old old leather. liking the way that's coming out. So we're 
do the other one and then we'll do some inking around the edges as well. And then I'm going to use a bit of ribbon to tie. Now I've got a choice of ribbons. So I have got a cinnamon cider ribbon, which matches this colour. But I've also got a faux suede ribbon. So I'm going to look and see which, which I like best. And then I'll just use my little sponge there to go around the edges. And we want to make sure, because we will see, we will see a little bit of the edge so I'm gonna just don't see much but we will see a little bit so it's worth putting those edges round because when that's on there you'll see a slight bit poking out so I'll make sure we've got the ink on that as well So these are my ribbon choices. So I've got soft suede ribbon that does match this cardstock and not soft suede, cinnamon cider, which matches nicely. Or I've got this faux suede. It's really beautiful. It's um, got a lovely feel to it. But I'm looking at it and I'm thinking I'm going to go for cinnamon cider. Actually, that's what I'm going to go for. So I've got to decide how I want this to go on. So I think we might make the opening at the bottom. So that'll be the top, that'll be the bottom. So I'm going to have the ribbon so what we've got is we're going to have to have the ribbon just attached to one side. So sort of across the back so that it comes round and ties around the front. And that's the way of keeping it closed. You can't have it attached 
because it won't open. So if we had it going around there, it would be stuck and wouldn't open. So our ribbon needs to be attached just on the back side, but be long enough to go round and tie in a bow. And the bow can be right on the front or it could be on the side. I'm thinking I'm probably gonna go for it on the side. So that we could put something on the front going to leave a little bit extra to allow for growth so I'm going to cut that about there so that is what we're doing so let's see how long that that piece of ribbon is so 12 24, 25, 26, 27. It's about 27, 28 inches. So um, 30, 60, about 70 centimetres. Okay, so again, we're having it opening that away. So we're going to put this across the back. That's our midpoint. So I've got a bit of fast fuse here. So just something to anchor your ribbon down. Just eyeballing where the center is there. And then we're gonna stick our cover bit over the top of it. Now you could round the corners if you wanted to. I'm going to leave them as they are. So I'm going to put glue on this bit because this is going to overlap. So using my collar. And this will make sure that the ribbon is also very secure so lots of glue there and that's not coming off so I'm going to get up to view this so I want to make sure We are centred on this nicely with the same sort of distance, a little eighth of an inch margin all the way around. Open it up there and use my bone folder to give it a good good burnish there. Got a bit of glue oozing. We can mop that up with my mopping up cloth, which has fallen on the floor. There we go, and then this front one is just stuck on the front there in the same way, just without any ribbon catch caught in. And so now we can go around like so to make sure that it's even 
with the back cover. And then we can open up and give it a good burnish. Bit of a mop up if we've got some oozing. And that is That's the back, that's the front, and I say you can then choose to tie your bow on the side if you're going to add some decoration to this, or it could be tied in the middle. It is your choice, whatever appeals. And there is room to grow because it will grow as you as you add things so that's the the basis of the book and it opens up like that and then that is your back side and it now goes open and close really really easily so that, we'll call that part one, and uh, in part two, I will do the embellishments. Okay, so hope you liked that, and um, it's a nice quick way of, if you're sort of nervous about doing your first journal, this would be a nice little one, something a little bit different, a nice little um, hybrid sort of um, activity. Um, between um, sort of scrapbooks and journals and um, yeah it might be a nice one to sort of start with and it doesn't take too long to do and obviously won't need many resources so please do join me in part two to see me um, decorating it if you wish to purchase anything that I've used the cardstock the ink the ribbon this absolutely stunning um, embossing folder they will all be linked down below and um, they will take you to my shop if you wish to purchase any of them okay see you next time <laughs>